Welcome to You Can Do It. Today we're talking about a summary on the, I think it's the 4718 uh, fault or the U101 fault on the DSG gearboxes. This particular one was a VW T5 uh, DQ500. Now it's always a bit of a heart attack when you basically lose your gears. So what you do, you start losing your gears. So you might drive, be driving along and suddenly you don't, you don't have any gears. It's just suddenly, it's like you're in neutral. Whatever gear you're in here, you're in neutral. That's when you're driving. Or the other option, go to start your car. Lights will all come up like that on the dashboard. But you won't get any further than that. When you try and turn the key, car won't start. You'll have a P in here. Sorry about there's too much sun here at the moment. The P there will start flashing. Your The brake, the green brake one might be flashing. And P up here will be flashing. And whatever you do, you put your foot on the brake and everything, you can't get it out of park that's what we had on this one when we started we just couldn't start out it'd been perfect we've been on holiday driven miles um everything was great parked it up it chucked it down with rain for three weeks with this parked on a bit of a slope and then when i decided to, to move it i put the key in turned it all up and then no start now you sort of immediately think well it could be a flat battery but then of course turn the fan on all the lights were fine and then you think, okay, it could be the starter motors stuck or something. But the telltale secret is the fact that normally when you put your ignition on and you put your foot on the brake lever, you can move it out of gear like that. This is all the fix and I fixed it now. Yeah. But in this case, when you've got that fault, you put your foot on there, it makes no difference at all. This video really is just a summary about ways to go and fix that. I mean, the first thing is you have a bit of a heart attack because you go online and or if you're driving and it dumps you somewhere, you're in a bit of a bit of bit of trouble what you can do is turn the key on and off and on and off and you might get get it reconnected but what it's basically basically it's saying that it can't communicate with the dsg gearbox which is why you've got no power you've got nothing so what that's basically saying is the power feed into the gearbox is is not connecting to the gearbox so that could be worst case is the mechatronic is blown but they're on these DQ500, they're really good like that. So they don't normally do that. Of course, if you take this to a garage, of course, you go, oh, well, we're going to need a new DSG Megatronic unit, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to cost you a fortune. So the th first thing to do is at least try these things to ascertain what the problem is. So in hindsight, like I said, I mean, there's lots of things that can, that can, can cause this, but it all causes the same thing, which is basically loss of power to the Megatronic unit. And the, the cable, you have a connector on your Megatronic unit, which is like a sort of barrel connector that you turn off and off. And the main one that takes the power in is a red and white cable. And there should be battery voltage, if the car's not running, a battery voltage on that red and white. So if you just want to quickly, you can quickly go right down, disconnect that connector and put a voltmeter on it and try and check to see whether you've got your power or not. And if you haven't got power at that in that connector, then they're telling you, obviously, that you've got a fault somewhere. So it's not a Megatronic unit. It's not a gearbox unit. So you can sort of rest a little bit there on the stress side, knowing that it's something else that's causing the lack of power to the gearbox. However, if there is, 12, if there is full power there, then you are potentially looking at the Megatronic unit. Obviously, if you haven't got power to that, uh, that connector, then you then need to start going through and looking at why you haven't got power there. And that could be all sorts of things from the relays uh, underneath the battery box. It could be a broken cable, which is what we actually had on this one. We had a broken cable, which I'll come back to in a minute. It could be one of the solenoids is not working under the battery box. It could be a whole host of things. So it could be uh, the ignition on here. But if the ignition on here is is not working then you still be able when you put your foot on your brake you still be able to move it in and out of gear okay so <clears throat> that, that's a bit of a clue that one if you put your foot on there and you can't move it out then I don't it's not ignition because uh, the ignition uh, would or would, would uh, won't let it start but, it, but you should still have be able to put your foot on there now if you've got the vds unit which like we've got you can see that the brake pedal deactivates and activates on the gearbox on the, on the switching so that's fine, even if you've got no, because it's actually just the, the, the brake, brake switch. So again, if you get flashing here, flashing on the P 
flashing up the pitta. And the other thing that you'll get, which is really weird, is the traction control. So suddenly, if your traction control comes up and you can't turn it off like that, that is another sign that the, the connection, there's a loss of connection to the trans, uh, Gearbox DQ500 trans, uh, megatronic unit. And what we had on this is a cable that was broken just as it comes out of the megatronic unit. And it was luckily that I caught it because I was looking around and it's it was still connected by the rubber sheath around the cable, but the cable had been cut through by rubbing on the edge. And luckily I just saw a little spark Oh, I thought, aha, so then we found it, which is why it was really intermittent. So I thought I'd solved it, went for a drive, and then during the, when I was driving, which is these are common symptoms, suddenly gearbox was going crazy, jumping around all sorts of gears. When you come to the traffic lights, it was on in seventh, and trying to set off, it was all over the place. And then suddenly you're left with it. You're, it doesn't matter whether you're in drive, neutral, reverse, or sport, it doesn't do anything. Um, so that was because the, this cable was intermittently touching the connect to make the connection so the gearbox worked and then it didn't and then it's getting completely and utterly confused all right now of course to go further you need well the vcds or some um, scanner so you can see what's going on but this is just a very quick summary video to try and reassure people when they have that problem with the gears loss of gears and everything that it doesn't necessarily mean it's a new megatronic unit, which is thousands of pounds of time and hassle and stress. So it could just simply be that your power to the megatronic is corrupted somehow. As I said, that could be water ingress because uh, there's a heck of a lot of water that goes down these channels on the roof. And if the if they're not all clean, the the the, the, the holes all the way down, you can get a lot of water underneath the the uh, well, within the in engine bay. However. All those relays and everything are in a sort of waterproof box. Now that should have a drain in that waterproof box, but if for any reason anything's got in there or you've had the lid off or you've got animals in there that burrowed their way in or whatever, you need to take that off and check it's all dry uh, and secure in there. Now, in our case, the cable the cable to the Megatronic unit had, had cut through because it had been cutting on the side of the... Uh, there's like a plastic barrel connector and it had been too tight now why was it too tight it was too it was too tight because probably when i changed the dmf uh flywheel on this i reckon when i put that back i put the zip ties in and held all the cables together and it was just a little bit too tight now that can come across for any reason when you're doing work on the in the engine bay that you take all that that loom or there's a bracket that holds it you have to take it off now you take that off sometimes with the starter motor as well so if you've had a gearbox change or a flywheel change, uh, starter motor change, they have to be super, super careful not to get that uh, DSG cable on the loom too tight because it will rub on there and eventually it'll go through. So that's something to check. Okay, now I've got a series of videos out here about how we actually went and solved the, this problem with here. So please watch that video if you want to see how I went about trying to find that problem i got a bit sidetracked and thinking it was a water ingress pro uh, problem from some videos i'd seen on youtube but then after checking it all out that wasn't the problem and then eventually we found the problem and then i showed you how I, how I solved it but i hope this video has been useful i couldn't find anything on the internet that sort of covered all these things so first of all you sit there and you're crapping yourself because you think what's going on because it's i mean really these these gearboxes are great when they work but it's not like a manual. I mean, a manual won't really let you down unless the clutch has gone. I mean, you might have a, you might have a um, synchronous go or something like that, but you'll always be able to get home or get somewhere. But these, basically, you need one cable to go to to be broken or or corroded or not work. And these are, these won't take you anywhere. You're absolutely used. To, you know, corrupt. So long term, I think I'll go back to getting a manual gearbox because they're great. But when you're going to run these for for a lot of miles. Um, you know it's uh it's sort of too risky too stressful although well, these are really good i mean this this dq's done four hundred thousand. car's done three hundred sixty nine thousand kilometers but i found out the gearbox has done more so i reckon that's had a new gearbox at some point in its life or an exchange gearbox uh, but so say there's four hundred thousand four hundred thousand kilometers I haven't changed the clutches or I had not have anything to done to it. I have very, very regularly serviced the gearbox. Oil change, filter change, paramount. Keep it all nice and clean in there. And don't do stupid things. Don't start ragging it when it's when it's uh, cold. 
be gentle with these things and, and they will last anyway hope this video has been helpful if you've got any comments send me a comment but just remember it doesn't really help you at the time but when your gearbox goes like this you're not alone someone else has been in it and i've just tried to put this together so that you've got some source to give you some idea of what to try because uh, i didn't really find that out there it was a bit bit difficult um even with the relays i, I only found one video that indirectly showed me where that where the relays were and lifting the box up underneath the battery um cover so <clears throat> yeah Please watch my other videos if you want more details on how we solved it, uh, the DQ500 no gear problem on this vehicle. And love to see you on the next video. Just remember, you can do it.